Good morning and welcome my gorgeous ladies to an episode of lingerie and lattes. I am really happy to be here. I have taken a bit of an impromptu hiatus uh, for the last few weeks. However, it is summer and I'm just allowing things to really just flow in their own timing. So it's great to be back here. I have a tarot, um, actually Oracle deck full for us today. And it comes from the Rise of Sophia Oracle deck from Angel Quintana. And I would really recommend looking into her work. She's been a profound uh, influence in my spiritual journey. And today's cards, let's see what they have in store for us. So we get to really recenter before we dive into the topic of um, intimacy and of libido and how women are sometimes interested in, let's say, ignoring or moving away from intimacy within their own bodies and eventually with their partners. Before we get into that, let's draw a card from this beautiful deck. It comes up as spirituality. And here's what it says. The time has come to sculpt your spiritual belief system. What do you know to be true? What brings you to a state of bliss? You may feel called to communicate with the higher realms, perhaps even to astral travel or interpret your dreams. You may feel a heightened sense of imagination, clearing the airwaves up for messages to come through more quickly and clearly. This is a turning point in your spirituality and one not to be taken lightly. If you feel a desire to jump in your car and take a road trip, do it. A new perspective on life is calling you. Watch the scenery of your life unfold before your eyes as spirituality guides you to a new frontier. Hang on for the ride. It's about to get exciting. So that's this beautiful deck. And this is a really great way to segue into our discussion, taking a new perspective in life happens when we have new information to work with. So I have been diving into women's health a lot more based on um, my experiences with my own body and how much I've had to support myself in a modern world that is not really designed for the feminine to shine as much as it is for the masculine. I do feel like the tides are turning and yet there is still such a big gap between the knowledge women should have around their cycles and about their bodies and what makes them feel optimal and the information that's actually available to us. I'm actually making, I was using this beautiful um, hibiscus rose mixture with Shatavari for my tea today, just to invoke more of that feminine essence. So I think we want to start off first with our health and a general check-in of how our bodies are doing, because when we try to force sensuality into our days, um, it could feel like a chore. And eventually it could feel so, you could feel unwilling to do it. And sometimes in those days, you might just completely omit it entirely. And then that rolls into from one day into three days, let's say to a week, and then a month go by and you haven't really tapped into your sensuality. So the way to overcome the, those situations is one to definitely do an internal check-in, noticing how your body is feeling. And if it is in a relatively healthy place, you maybe wanna check out the new article I posted three steps to heal your womb for pleasure. Um, there's some very interesting insights on it. It's on my website blog. I will post the link down below. And it, it goes into understanding uh, if our uterus is actually in its proper placement. So that's kind of step one, noticing these physical things, um, be, being aware of your body and whether it is able to self-lubricate, noticing if you're arousal is a visceral reaction to when you are stimulating yourself or whether it's all in the mind. Taking awareness of these things allows you to, to um, 
become better with your sensuality, to dive deeper into it. If you know where your starting point is, uh, you can kind of see what isn't working and that way you can incorporate the proper tools to help yourself become this beautiful embodied sensual being. So if we're thinking about our uh, physical health and let's say it's on a pretty stable, um, stable path today, the next thing that you can start to consider is noticing maybe why you feel re uh, resistance towards diving into your sensuality. Is it coming up with excuses such as, I don't have time for that, there's other priorities that are taking place, um, this is something maybe that shame or guilt could be involved in. I just got a beautiful comment on one of my previous videos called The Good Girl. And I was speaking about how much uh, shame exists in our society. And it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation for women to experience um, pleasure in the body and also not be deemed the whore. So noticing where the resistance is coming from, whether it is a physical tiredness, whether it is an excuse of work and prioritization, or if it is something a little bit more emotional and emotional driven which is um, guilt shame um, not wanting to feel like you're uh, doing something wrong and so forth I've noticed that a lot of times when I tell myself that I'm not in the mood in order to engage in intimacy um, if I ask myself why that is or what is causing me to have that disconnect from my body and from pleasure, I notice that it's a lot of the times it has to do with some sort of mental story that's playing in my mind. And the best remedy for that is actually to start slow, but to dive in for me, it is through my physical self. So a lot of the times I will very slowly start to just caress my body because that brings me back into the physical and it allows me to calm down my nervous system. And once I've actually calmed down my nervous system, I can start to go into the play realm. But before that, if I'm in an agitated state and I try to immediately go into um, sensual play, that will feel kind of forced and unpleasant for me. So this happens in relationships as well. Sometimes there isn't really a harmony between when two people want to engage in intimacy. I know when I was coaching my, um, my a married couple, that was an issue that would come up sometimes. Let's say one person is in the mood in the mornings, another person is in the mood in the um, evenings, and it feels like there is um, a mismatch of desire. Now, every person is going to be different with what they want. So we have to work with um, both our own needs and our partner's needs. That being said, I would like to invite the idea that many times when we feel like we are not in the mood to play woman, it is sometimes related to something outside of the bedroom. And if we can kind of dig into that, bring awareness, and also be able to put that aside for a moment, if, if allowed, if you're not going through any sort of severe issues, um, you can bring yourself back into your body and you can start to bring yourself into a play state. So when you think that you're not in the mood, sometimes it's good to explore those easy, soft touches for me it is, or maybe it's simply placing a hand on my heart and on my belly, or even just touching my belly, um, rubbing it, just allowing some sort of softness into myself. That is usually a gateway to go further and to explore intimacy. So I would like to propose the idea that the moment you think you're not in the mood, ask yourself why and see if you can maybe invite, entice yourself to play and allow your partner to be um, a positive force in that process. Allow him to understand your needs, voice them, tell him, you know, maybe you can start off with a light shoulder rub or it would be great for me to feel your hand on my leg 
you know, just from my ankle up to my knee. If you could just focus on this area and help me come back to a present state, maybe then we can go a little further. Voicing your um, opinion and, and your needs, but also allowing yourself to go beyond this constriction that you've created mentally can be extremely helpful to build intimacy and to build connection with your partner and to bridge the gap that maybe doesn't have to be there. So again, when we check in with our health, um, when we check in with the why of we're not feeling in the mood and then exploring different ways to bring ourselves into the mood, those three steps help you to bring sensuality into the forefront of your life because we don't wanna get into a place where we haven't experienced any sort of sensual pleasure in the last four months. Sensuality is so innate to us. It is an animalistic desire. It is a spiritual channel for the divine to communicate with us. It surges our happy hormones in the body, clears the mind. It can do so much good for us in our lives. And when we uh, want to essentially ignore it or put it aside, we're omitting a lot of the magic that's available to us. I would like for that to be the main topic for today for an exploration when you don't feel to be in the mood, how can you entice yourself to be in the mood? And if we take it a step outside of this conversation, if we just think about observing animals play, a lot of times if you see like a puppy playing with an older dog, they will start to do certain moves in order to entice play from the older uh, dog and, and older animals. So we have to remind ourselves, we are just like dogs and cats and um, cheetahs and lions and all these different mammals uh, that exist on earth. And to be able to observe them and see how they respond to, to play or how they get into the zone or the mindset of having fun, it helps us to, to, to know that you don't always have to be in an aroused state before you start your pleasure play. You don't have to be already invested in um, making yourself turned on or getting yourself to, to turn on before you can simply start with easy ways to relax the body, ease the mind, and that may be the invitation your body needed in order for it to go a little further and start having some fun. So thank you so much, my beautiful ladies. Um, it's been a pleasure. And until next time, happy lingerie and lattes.